Hey everyone, Mark from Self Sufficient Me. It's windy, I've got a chopper overhead. Reminds me of when I was in the military. I'd be happy to never go in a chopper ever again. So, it's all noisy. Wind's buffeting this thing. Not gonna be a great video. But I had a few requests after my last video, just coming back from holidays, showed you the veggie garden. I had a few requests saying, well, what did you do with the animals while you are away? Well, the truth is, I left them on their own for about 10 days until my mother could get here. It was about nine days until my mother could get here and she brought the boys back. I dropped them off at her place, a few hours away from here in a place called Toowoomba. Um, then she came back here and when the boys started school, she took them to school for us for the last six or so days while we were away. And so while there was no one here, I set up a, a video surveillance system which I could access from where I was overseas, just to check up on a few things. But essentially, they were all left to their own, all the ducks, chickens, and quail. And I'll give a brief explanation of what I did. I won't cover it too much because I've done that in previous videos. You can check it up there in the cards if you want to see my old videos on how I prepare the, the poultry for when I go away or go on holidays. But uh, yeah, come on. You want to come through? Well, it's open. You just have to push on it. Come on. Don't be a pussy. Come on. That's it. All right, anyway. I've had these guys locked up. I let them out for the last few hours of the day. I've had a few jobs on and uh, had some workers here. So I've just left them locked up. They'll be keen just to stretch their legs for a few hours before nightfall. Especially the ducks, I'll probably go around to the dam. But uh, anyway, all I essentially did was I, I cleaned out their, their ponds, the duck ponds, the internal pond I've got here, which is, you know, quite a bit of water. Had that all nice and clean, spicky span, duck bucket, a couple of duck pools, extra ones. So they had plenty of water to splash around and have fun in for the 10 days that, or so that I wasn't, that there was no one here. They're quite safe in this pen, of course. It's quite a large pen. They've got lots of places to roam. And uh, the chickens, well, they, they had that to drink. They had another drink container over here. Um, and as far as food goes, I set up several food stations, you know, I've got my big feeders here um, and all the, my little bucket feeder here. I love these type of DIY feeders, that feeder there. And in there, one of the holding pens, I left that open and put another spare feeder I had there. So they had plenty of food, but there's a funny thing that happened. What I did was I thought, oh, you know what, I'll get this bucket. You know, and I sat at, see this area here? I made this funny little area. I sat this bucket on its edge, like that, and I put some feed in there so that the, the ducks could have a good dig in. That's just a, one extra feeder that I made out of a bucket sort of on its side. And I thought nothing of it really. Anyway, my mother, she's come here and she's telling me that when she got here, there was this, was like this, right? So she's come through the, the gate, first time come back, had a look around. There was still some feeding left in the feeders and uh, she just topped them up with the feed that I left her in the bin. Anyway, she's heard this noise, rattle, 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 coming from that and she's shit scared of snakes. And uh, she's actually come down here before and there's been a big python in the chicken coop. And I had to go drag it out, but it scared the hell out of her. But anyway, so she's, uh, she's, she's heard this rattle, so she reckons she was scared as, she knew it'd be a snake under there or something, but it's coming, it's, it's tap, tap, tapping away. So she's kicked it off, and underneath it was one of the, was one of the ducks. So somehow, it must have been a freak accident. This quite heavy bucket, Sitting there, somehow it must have, they must have, off wind or, must have somehow tipped over, trapped the duck underneath it. 
and uh, luckily it wasn't trapped there for too long so it didn't die or anything but that is one fluky situation anyway uh, so there was a big build up of eggs here in there in the corner that's why she's freaking out sitting in there um, anyway because of course we were away for 10 days we had this big build up of eggs and we've got some eggs for today as well and uh, little Miss Nasty my mother called her why I don't know why is it Miss Nasty oh, is that why so she wouldn't let my mother take the egg seat so she kept pecking like that. But you don't have to be worried about hens pecking um, because they don't hurt when they peck. They give you a bit of a fright, especially for kids and you know your mother, your old mother, and that can can be annoying and, and it's like someone pinching you. And, and but you know for most people that's nothing. Uh, so there's Miss Nasty. Uh, anyway, got a got a whole bunch of eggs. What have I got this on? My head's really fat in this. That's better. Got a whole bunch of eggs and uh, and so what I've done today is pickle them. And I'll, I'll show you the pickling. Uh, might do that now actually and finish the video off with it. So that was the go. Um, I didn't do anything extra special, just a bit of extra food. Made sure I had enough for the 10 days or so. Before I left I threw a cabbage in here and uh, some big hearted lettuces, iceberg lettuces. Uh, some cucumbers on whole cucumbers just to keep them occupied for several days they could gnaw at it the chickens and the ducks um, of course i left the quail with enough food and water as well um, yeah so it was all cool and uh, it was just a big build up of eggs all right i'll leave you with the pickling solution and all that and i'll sign off from there this isn't even all our eggs we've been eating quite a few in omelettes, quiches, and just fried eggs for breakfast. But anyway, grab all the eggs, whack them in a big pot and boil them up. That can be more than three minutes, so boil them up for five or ten. You know, make sure they're really hard, then cool them off in cold water. Boiled eggs can be really difficult to peel, especially if they're fairly new. Like, the older the egg is, or the older egg is sitting on the shelf, the more it retracts or evaporates in the shell and when you boil it up it's easier to peel but if they're fairly newly laid they can be really sticky and difficult so what I do is I make sure after I boil them I cool them off in water and then I really give them a good tap around to make sure all the shell is really cracked it gives you the best opportunity to peel a nice clean egg because if you don't have a good clean egg um, if, you know they don't pickle very well so this is what I do, run the tap a little bit, really take the time to crack all that shell into little pieces, and even then roll it around a bit in the hand, just lightly. <coughs> and then under the water, just tear a little piece off in the end, find the air pocket. Then you want to see that bit of membrane. You want to get under that membrane and start peeling. And then carefully, don't go overboard, just carefully peel it off. The water running will just get underneath that membrane and shell and just help peel that shell off. then you're right, you've got a nice smooth googie without any broken pieces off it. You might still get the odd broken piece as you go through, but generally most of the eggs will be all good. Alright, let's hit the patch and pick a few chilies and some herbs, probably just some dill. I don't think I'll put any coriander. I'll, I'll do a small jar of chili pickled eggs and the rest I'll just use with dill and some garlic, peppercorn, salt, 
and vinegar that'll do the chili one I'll keep for myself and the other types I'll give to the boys for their school lunches and that type of thing nice big dill here let's grab a bit of that some of the young leaves chop that up don't need much That should do, I think. We'll get a few chilies, red chilies that have dried here. Oh, does that look okay? Might just pick a few green ones that should be enough you know what I might just grab a couple of bay leaves because I quite like the odd bay leaf there'll be just a couple of young ones and I'll throw them in each jar Nice spring growth. Maybe a couple of older ones. Okay, once I've selected my herbs, I then use some plain vinegar. I use a ratio of two parts to one. So two parts vinegar. In this case, it's a one litre container. Two litres of vinegar to one part water. So there's the water going in last. This should make enough for what I need for all those eggs. I've put some mustard seed in, a couple of teaspoons of that, and a couple of teaspoons of peppercorns, gives us a nice bit of a zip. Sea salt, a ratio of one tablespoon of sea salt per litre or quart of water. Then I throw in some herbs, there's some bay leaves that adds a nice, uh, good aroma and taste, and a bit of dill, like I picked earlier. I don't put any chili in at this stage, I just add the garlic. I'll put chili in later because you don't want to put chili in right now otherwise it'll go through the whole mix and I only want one jar of chili have your jars ready to go then just once it's boiled you just switch it off quickly you don't boil it for too long and just add some of the solids or as much of the solids as possible scoop it out and add them in the base of the jars that way the solids don't go all through the top and it's a bit messy and it's hard to sort of get them out and you've got bits of stuff everywhere then add all the eggs pack them in nice and tight don't have to over pack them pour in the liquid on top make sure they're fully covered pretty simple process that's going to be hot when you put the lid on it so be a bit careful use a tea towel if you're, if it's too hot and then that the chili jar because i didn't want all of it in chili i sprinkled the chili in last i had a bit of chili in the bottom of that one that'll be the one the missus and i eat and then that's it they'll just let them cool down now and then put them in the fridge refrigerate them and they're ready to eat the next day really they taste quite nice but they're best after a few weeks left uh, in the fridge store them in the fridge that's the best way to do it and that's how you pickle a glut of chicken eggs really excellent for school lunches uh, kids just love them i love them yeah good way to go thanks a lot for watching don't forget the website selfsufficientme.com or even join our forum selfsufficientculture.com Bye for now.